Tibet, the roof of our world. Words do no justice to the untouched beauty of this far corner of Earth. A vast, mysterious, and sacred place, embraced and protected by miles of immovable mountains. Monasteries, built many hundreds, sometimes thousands of years ago, stand in defiance of the elements, precariously placed among the clouds. Many of these very ancient structures are said to have been built on the remnants of once even grander ancient buildings, structures many religions attribute to the gods. Among the seemingly endless mountain ranges lay one mountain which is different, one which is special. It is believed by most of Tibet, and even further afield, that the god Shiva lay buried within this sacred mountain. According to ancient beliefs, this enigmatic Tibetan mountain represents the axis of the world, the stairway to heaven. In many eastern countries, Mount Kailash is considered the holiest place on earth. Some ancient sources even suggesting it is where one could find the mysterious city of the gods. It is indeed regarded within the climbing world as unascendable. A route has never been located and probably never will. Few have been brave enough to even go near this place in the past century. There may be some profound reasoning behind these ancient clusters of human beings, regarding this particular mountain over all others as sacred and as the resting place of a god. There may, however, be ulterior motives at play when it comes to the discouragement of climbers in attempting the peak. A team of Russian scientists, intrigued by the history and a possible suppression of its true nature, have suggested after covert explorations that the top of Mount Kailash is not a natural formation. It is actually the remnants of a giant man-made pyramid of great antiquity. Just how old this pyramid could be currently remains unclear. What also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone, slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone. End quote. A mysterious claim put forward in regards to the mountain concerns rapid aging when in the area. After spending 12 hours in the region, the length of nails and hair was equal to two weeks of normal growth in some cases. Several mystics have said that the mountain has a secret entrance within it, leading to the legendary kingdom of Shambhala. Legend also states that when the ice on its peak finally melts, it will reveal the eye. Professor Ernst Muldashev, PhD, a doctor and explorer, who traveled Tibet extensively, said later in his life, quote, There are two underground countries, the Shambhala and Agartha, which are each part of the gene pool of humanity and civilization. Information provided by the Thule Society shows there is a higher civilization coming from the Himalayas and divided into two branches, the Shambhala and Agartha, the former being the center of power protected by unknown forces and energy. End quote. An understanding of what sort of pyramid Kailash could be, or indeed just how special it is, may take several years to establish. I will, of course, keep you posted. A few months ago, we did a video regarding an enigmatic mountain which rests within modern-day Tibet. We touched upon the amazing legends, speaking of the mountain actually being that of an ancient man-made pyramid which, according to such legends, is placed at the center of the universe. They spoke of a mysterious giant eye placed upon the top of the mountain, an eye which, according to said legends, will reveal itself when the ice and snow within the area melts away. Akin to a story containing the eye of Mordor, yet hopefully not as malevolent. Although Mount Kailash can be found within modern-day Tibet, its location is very close to the borders of India, a place which few know possesses one of, if not the most amazing ancient structure to have ever been discovered or indeed built upon our planet. A structure which dwarfs the Great Pyramids 
and indeed the Great Sphinx with artistic wonder. Actually known as the Kailash Temple, it is an exquisitely cut series of supposed praying temples and other communal buildings which was, many thousands of years ago, carved straight out of an enormous horseshoe-shaped rock resting within a hillside. According to mainstream academia, Kailash Temple was somehow built by a primitive people using primitive tools during a duration of 400 years, from 200 BC to 600 BC. However, no one seems to be able to explain how such a primitive culture could have possibly created something so awe-inspiring, something so artistically accurate and wonderful, something we would indeed struggle to recreate today. A structure not only architecturally accurate, but also drenched in a masterpiece of sculpture. Largely accepted as a flawless piece of art, no less than 200,000 tons of stone was masterfully carved away, creating several separate temples, each drenched in tiny artistic detail. Rediscovered in 1819, is it possible that the Hindu decorations found within were merely later additions? Additions to a relic left actually built by a civilization far more advanced and far more ancient than we are allowed to publicly believe? It is understandable for one to wonder, how did a primitive civilization create such a wonder with primitive tools, attaining such a perfection, such refined finish to each tiny detail? It is conveniently unexplained just how they managed to cut into this single block of rock with such precision and indeed vision adorning the structure with thousands of animals. It seems as if it were a tribute, a gift depicting what can be found on our planet. Is Mount Kailash, as legends say, really the center of the universe? Is this mind-bogglingly detailed, most intricately built ancient temple by a long way actually a tribute to this fact? Made up of temples which are all now perceived to be shared between three faiths, Buddhist, Hindu, and Jain. Are these multiple faiths further evidence of a re-inhabitation rather than a construction? The 200,000 tons of rock, for example, is nowhere to be found. And as previously covered in the Kailash video, the same is seen with the apparent enormous excavation found around the base of Mount Kailash itself. Compelling evidence for manipulation of the landscape giving credence to the legends of it being, in fact, an enormous pyramid. Regardless of this, the fact that the temple carries the same name as this mysterious and still unclimbed mountain within Tibet, we find highly compelling. From all over the planet, ancient legends of a bipedal, ape-like creature, far larger yet apparently incredibly intelligent, have persisted into the modern day legends which arose worldwide, creatures now witnessed by literally millions of souls, yet regardless of the literally global distribution of reports of these said animals, they have remained elusive to modern science, in all but a few very interesting and curious cases, one of which being a most curious of discoveries made in 1951 on none other than the slopes of Mount Everest. Some argue that such a large creature, no matter the remoteness of its claimed habitat, if in existence, would have been captured and or exposed to the wider public by now. This, regardless of their possible intelligence, ability to see in infrared, allowing them to dodge trail cams, and also that there are discoveries of new animals, including large mammals made almost weekly on our planet. It would seem, although modern technology has brought us together, giving the apparent impression that our planet be smaller than it is, in reality, there are still vast stretches of terrain yet to be fully explored and rarely, if ever, visited by man. Mysterious events have also occurred during the modern age, like that of the Dyatlov Pass incident or the Pangbosh Yeti which still reside within a monastery in Nepal, which all evade explanation without the existence of this creature. As mentioned, in 1951, an incredible find was stumbled upon by none other than Eric Shipton, an incredibly trustworthy source and man of great integrity. While on the Menlung Glacier, on the west side of Mount Everest, 
While looking for an alternative route to the summit, Shipton came across a seemingly unending set of tracks, recently left by a barefooted bipedal creature of massive proportions. So stunned was Shipman by this find, he carefully examined and photographed the best print, laying his ice axe beside it in an attempt to demonstrate its enormous size. According to National Geographic, quote, Shipton and Michael Ward were searching for an alternative Everest route when they came across the prints. Shipton was one of the most highly respected Everest explorers, so if he is bringing back a print, it is a real print. Nobody could ever question that." End quote. Thus, the question is, what could have made them? Could these be authentic, actual prints of a snow yeti or abominable snowman? A slightly different species of Sasquatch? One adapted to colder, more mountainous environments? Some, so convinced that Shipton did indeed encounter authentic prints, they have dedicated their entire lives to the pursuit of the truth surrounding the find. Believing Shipton not to have been an individual who would have any interest or inclination to fake such a discovery. Daniel Taylor, for example, author of Yeti, The Ecology of a Mystery, has been searching for signs of this particular abominable snowman within the high Himalayas since he was a child. With the World Book Encyclopedia even approaching Sir Edmund Hillary to pursue the find's origins, he was quoted as saying, we shouldn't just go yeti searching, but should also study how people could live at such high altitudes." End quote. The publication was so convinced of their authenticity, as was Hillary himself, that they built a house at 19,000 feet and experimented on how humans acclimatized. With such efforts going into the find, one must wonder why the possibility of its existence, if you also take into account the Pangbosch remains, and also the Dyatlov Pass incident, why the possibility of their reality is so passionately dismissed as impossible by so many. The Shipton prints are a mystery which is undoubtedly incredibly compelling. In 1914, archaeologists found an astonishing location in Ganung Padang, in Indonesia. Two ancient stone mountains rest in this region, mountains in the form of pyramids, their size is truly massive. Intrigued by their shape, this 1914 team initiated a series of test digs in the small likelihood that they were man-made. The proposition of these two huge land features actually being pyramids, must have been virtually unthinkable to these initial explorers, their subsequent excavation also concluded that the site was indeed a natural formation. However, fast forward 100 years of technological advances in archaeology, photography, ground penetrating radar and satellite imaging, and we can now take much deeper looks at locations, gaining far greater insight than was possible a century ago. The archaeological societies are currently in a panic, in regards to an expedition which is being undertaken to this very site. Over 100 years after its initial discovery and disregardment. What is interesting to note, a detail this team must be aware of, a detail largely suppressed and rarely discussed, is the fact that very ancient monuments rest upon the tops of each mountain, monuments that were later dated at 2,500 years old. And confirmed as artificial megalithic structures. The reason the archaeological community is worrying, is due to their possible size. They would dwarf the Great Pyramids of Giza. However, the pyramids, in Giza are in a very special location, they in fact rest on the center of the world's land mass, the question would be, why would Indonesia possess such ginormous pyramids? In 2010, geologist Dr. Daninata Wijaja, who earned a doctorate at Caltech, recognized the mountains as possible man-made pyramids, and began to explore using ground-penetrating radar, seismic tomography, resistivity survey and other remote sensing techniques, as well as some direct excavations and deep core drilling. The results were immediately intriguing, producing evidence of deeply buried man-made chambers and yielding carbon dates going back as far as 26,000 years. This would make the construction prior to the last ice age. Such ideas are heresy to mainstream archaeologists. The archaeological establishment in Indonesia banded together against Dr. Nato Wijaja and his team, lobbied the political authorities, agitated locally and succeeded in slowing down, though not completely stopping, the further exploration of Ganung Padang. 
However Dr. Nato Wijaja fought back, doing some high-level lobbying of his own, taking the matter to the President of Indonesia himself. There were further delays to do with elections in Indonesia but just a couple of months ago, the final obstacles were lifted and Dr. Nato Wijaja and his team moved back on to the Ganung Padang site with full approval to go ahead with their work, including permission to excavate the concealed chambers. Although it may not be widely received, this excavation may be the most important currently being undertaken on Earth. Mainstream archaeologists are furious, and have been lobbying to get the work stopped, fortunately to no avail. Preliminary excavations have produced results that prove beyond doubt that Ganung Padang is indeed a man-made pyramid of great antiquity. Even the relatively young layer so far excavated, the second artificial columnar rock layer beneath the megalithic site visible on the surface, has yielded dates of 5200 BC, nearly 3000 years older than the orthodox dating for the pyramids of Giza in Egypt. They are also firm indications from the original remote sensing and core drilling work that there is much older layers below. In short, it is now evident to all that the site is vastly older than the 2,500 years archaeologists had insisted upon for decades. Even the most hostile are now quietly reframing their assessment of the site and referring to it as a gigantic terrace tomb, which was part of the biggest megalithic culture in the archipelago. I will keep you posted.